All right, so the last thing we're going to do today is, is bootstrapping. Now, you'll notice in all the trees we've generated, one, thing, one huge thing that you would see on any other graph has been absent. Error bars. Right? In a phylogenetic tree, how do, you, how do you assess or how do you measure your confidence in the tree structure or the branch length? Because without a measure of confidence, you don't know what to make of the tree, right? If you've got a bar graph, it can be meaningless. Or it can be very important, depending on how big those error bars are. What about trees? Well, it turns out that you can calculate a p-value for branch length. That's straightforward math, no problem. But there is no measure using chi-square or p-values for branch structure. And so we have to use a different approach. And that approach is bootstrapping. So how does this work? So here's a sequence alignment. You can generate a tree from that. And there it is. How do you determine how confident you are of it? Well, what if you create a second alignment by randomly selecting columns from the first one. It doesn't matter what order they're in, right? Because the sim when you score similarity, it's going to be the same number of similarities and differences, right? So you, could, you can jumble up the columns in alignment, and it should make no difference in the tree, assuming you're not looking at gaps in a sophisticated way. So what if instead of just jumbling it, you, you, you take if in this alignment, you have 10 positions, so you create a blank alignment with 10 columns, and then you randomly select columns, one after the other, to add to the second alignment. Some of those columns might be chosen more than once, and so in, in choosing a random number from 1 to 9, 9 was chosen three times, 2 was chosen twice, 5 was chosen once, 8 was chosen once, um, but 6 was not chosen at all. And, 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 and let's imagine that this alignment is now a thousand nuclear tides long and not just ten. Probably ought to get the same tree, right? Or pretty similar. So what if you do this? This is called bootstrapping for historical reasons. And so what if you generate thousands of such alignments? And so you, you create a thousand matrices, you know, ten positions long, and you randomly select them and all of them, and generate a thousand trees. And then it turns out that mathematically it's trivial to make a consensus tree to count the number of times branches are the way they are. The more sh the better the data for a particular branch, the more frequently that branch will show up in a tree. Now, all of the end branches are always going to be there, right? I mean, so Sophilobus acetocalderis is on a branch of its own in every tree because it's, it's the branch that leads to that leaf of the tree. But all the internal branches are up for grabs. And the better the data for any of these internal branches, the more frequently it should show up in a bootstrap analysis. And these are usually reported by writing the numbers above the branch. So, for example, in this, this case, in 68% of trees, all of these sequences were together in one group to the exclusion of all the rest. That's what this branch is, right? It's a branch that separates all these sequences from all these sequences. 81% of trees had these three sequences together to the exclusion of the rest. 55% of trees had the sulfurococcus and PJP74 the specific relatives. Usually, any number greater than 50% is considered to be a good bootstrap value and you should have some confidence in that range. Here's one that's 100%. That, that, in every single tree generated, these four organisms were grouped together. You ought to be very confident about them, right? Now, you'll notice there are two numbers here. This, this was done in this particular paper. This is a paper from Sue Barnes. 
um, PNAS paper. In this case, the top number is the bootstrap analysis from a neighbor joining algorithm, and the bottom one was a neighbor or bootstrap analysis from a maximum likelihood treating algorithm. And so you're not just looking at bootstrap for one, one algorithm, but two algorithms. And so, and you'll see that there are differences. Here, for example, you have 76 versus 57 percent comp or percent um, trees have that branch. And so the algorithms are a little different. If a branch is really there, it ought to give you good numbers no matter what algorithm. Sometimes the differences are, are, are less than that. Sometimes they're more than that. Notice that some of these don't have numbers. Any number below 50% isn't reported. Here's a branch that's present in 81% of neighbor joining trees and less than 50% of maximum likelihood. And probably the reason for that is that you've got long and short branches together in that part of the tree. And so maximum likelihood doesn't believe that. branch is probably pushed up in here instead. Notice another thing. The shorter the branch, the smaller the number in general. And so this long branch here is, is present in 100% of, of, of trees regardless of what algorithm you use. Whereas this branch it's less than 50% in one tree algorithm and only 50% in the other. Is this a surprise? Probably shouldn't be. What does that long branch represent? A bunch of evolutionary change, right? And so all that evolutionary change is signal in the analysis that can be picked up in the bootstrap analysis so that the tree goes in the right direction. Think of all the all the nucleotide substitutions this means that are similar in these two and different than everything else. And so in general, the longer the branch is, and the longer the internal branch is, the more confident you ought to be that it exists. And these little tiny short branches, maybe not so much. It's absolutely critical these days that if you're going to publish a tree that you include bootstrap values on there or the reviewers of the paper will immediately ask for it. That actually is a useful approach sometimes, by the way. That gives the reviewer something to complain about, something you can supply immediately. Very easily. All right. 